Segundo. So the goal of this lesson is understanding equivalent fractions, specifically simplest form. In this example here, we have four different whole rectangles divided into um, different equal parts. So in this representation, we have two equal parts. One of them has dots. In this representation, four of them, uh, the rectangles divided into four, two of them have dots, and so on. So we have four eighths and six twelfths. All of these equal one half. When we write two fourths, four eighths, six twelfths in simplest form, it will equal one half. And you can see in my rough sketch that each picture, one half, is shaded. Let's take a look specifically at what simplest form means. Simplest form means that you cannot divide the numerator and the denominator by the same factor, aside from the number one. And so I have a couple examples here, 10 over 12. When I break that down and divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, in this case two, I get simplest form, 5, 6. 30 over 40, when I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10, I get simplest form, 3 fourths. Notice that I have to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number so that the fraction remains equivalent or the same. Technically, I'm dividing this by 1 because 2 over 2 equals 1. So these are the same amount, just like my candy bars. One half of the candy bar was the same if I would eat four out of eight pieces or if I would eat six out of 12 pieces. Same thing here, 10 over 10 equals one. So technically, the value isn't changing. I'm just writing it in a more efficient way. Let's take a look at some helpful hints. Let's say I have a fraction that looks a little more intimidating. There are a couple things that you can remember that might help you divide both the numerator and the denominator to get them in simplest form. If you know your multiplication facts, simplifying will be much easier for you. If you struggle with that, here are three divisibility rules that I really like. If both the numerator and the denominator are even, they end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then you can divide both of those by 2. If both the numerator and the denominator end in a 0 or a 5, you can divide both of them by 5. And if both the numerator and denominator end in a 0, you can divide both by 10 to help get you on the road to simplifying. Let's take a look at our fraction example here. The best way to go is to think of the largest number you can divide both of these by. But if I don't know the greatest common factor, I like the idea of noticing that both of these end in a zero, so I can start by dividing both of them by 10. That leaves me with 12 over 14. Now I want to make sure this is in simplest form. Both of them are even, so I know I can keep going. Since they're both even, my divisibility rule said, hey, you can divide those by 2. So if I divide both of those by 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 14 divided by 2 is 7. I cannot break these down any further because there is no factor that they both share. So 6 sevenths is the simplest form for 120 over 140. Here's another example, 30 over 36. Now knowing my multiplication facts, I know that the most efficient way to divide those two numbers would be dividing by six. But if I wasn't really good at my multiplication facts, I'm gonna use those things that I remember, and I'm gonna think they both end in an even number. So I can divide by two. 30 divided by two is 15. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Now I look at my new fraction, my rewritten fraction, and it says 15 18 So I can't divide both of those by 2 because they're, they're not both even. Um, I 
can't divide both of those by 5 because they don't end in a 5 and a 0, both. And they both don't end in 10. So my next hint to you is to start using factors, um, starting with 3, since we already did 2, and just moving up until we can't divide anymore. So if I look at 15 and I think 3, 15 divided by 3, 3 times 5 is 15, so 3 would work for 15. 18, I know that 3 times 6 would work for 18. So I can divide both of these by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, 18 divided by 3 is 6. So my simplest form for 30 over 36 is 5, 6. Again, if you know your math facts, go for the largest factor you can think of. Like I said at the beginning, I would start with 6, and then I would only have to divide one time. Let's take a look at some other examples. Remember that I said when all else fails, start dividing by numbers less than 10 and keep going. So here's a problem where I have 21 over 56. And again, they both are not even, so I know that 2 will not work. So then I go to 3. Well, I know 3 times 21 gives me, or I'm sorry, 3 times 7 gives me 21. But I'm not sure about 56. So I could go over here and I could try it. And it looks like, nope, nothing times 3 gives me 26, so 3 won't work. 4, nothing times 4 gives me 27. 5, they both don't end in a 0 or 5. 6 won't work because nothing times 6 gives me 21. 7, well, 7 times 3 gives me 21. So let me think about 56. 7 times 8 gives me 56. So in this case, by just going through my numbers less than 10, I'm able to find a common factor that I can divide both of these by. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 56 divided by 7 is 8. Simplest form for 21 over 56 is 3 eighths. Let's try a couple other examples. 12 over 15. 2 won't work because they're both not even, but I know 3 times 4 would work for 12, and I know 3 times 5 for 15. So if I divide both of these by 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 15 divided by 3 is 5, 4 fifths is simplest form because I cannot divide these. Next I have 9 over 35. So I'm thinking it might already be in simplest form, but I want to make sure. So I start with 2. That won't work because they're both not even. 3 times 3 gives me 9. Does anything times 3 give me 35? I know that it doesn't, but if I were a student that wasn't sure, take that extra minute to try and nothing times 3 gives me 5, because I would get a remainder. Okay, so 3 won't work. 4 won't work, I know. 5 won't work. 6, nope, because nothing times 6 gives me 9. 7, 8, and at this point I can stop, because I can't break 9 down by anything else. So, 9 over 35 is already in simplest form. 